Turn is Deji returning to the ring. Well, I've got an answer for you there. I think it's... Listen, if Misfits wanted to send a fucking uh, Grim Reaper to kill me off once and for fucking all, it wouldn't be you then. So just shut the fuck up and sit there. Your fucking existence on this card is my doing. You were brought here by me to be slaughtered by me. The only time you'll raise your hand is to speak in one of my Twitter spaces or something. It's just complete delusion. There's absolutely nothing you can do to damage me. Can we expect you to make the walk this Friday night? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Misfits News. I'm your host, as always, Ben the Bane Davis, joined by my co-host, BL. Now, I'm currently in the middle of a weight cut, hence the top off. But BL, I got a quick question before we get into things. How are you? I'm doing very well, Ben. Loving to see the top off action today. You know, preparing for your fight with Most Wanted. But before we get into that fight, let me give you a rundown of today's topics. One of the Misfits champs has hinted at his return. Deji gets us the latest update on his six-pack. We answer your community questions. And Ben, you're going to be facing off with Most Wanted this video. Oh, it's going to be quite ridiculous to hear what that little gremlin has to say. But that's at the end. At the beginning of today's episode is, of course, Face Jarvis. Now, he won the belt in November at your call. He beat B-Dave pretty decisively. But since then, it's just been nothing from him. There's a couple rumors of fights, but nothing's been booked, BL. And listen, I want to see Jarvis back in the ring stat. Well, Jarvis has been doing sparring with the highest level opposition. We obviously saw him do it with Carmel Moton recently, and we know he was injured after that B-Day fight because his hands were ruptured. The reason why I'm not getting offered opponents is because of my hand injury, so I can't fight right now. Like, I literally can't punch with this hand. It is healing up, though. It looks like he may be fighting later on this year. August 31st It's a rumoured key date that I'm hearing, and it looks like he might be fighting Fez Batista. That's what Fez Batista is saying, and I love Fez to death, but he does have a tendency to say a lot of things and what's crazy in my opinion is the guy who beat Fez Batista should probably be fighting for the title and Ben Williams considering he's I think the number three ranked contender in the welterweight division and if you look ahead of Ben it's Ed Matthews who's coming off of that loss to Luis Pineda and Nick LMAO who's expressed that he doesn't want to fight anytime soon so for me if you're going to do August 31st in Dublin, why on earth would you not move mountains to get the Irishman, Ben Williams, in a title shot? Like, that would, I mean, come on. That just makes perfect sense. I like Fez, but I just don't see that fight for that card. I think that's a fantastic matchup. I do think Jarvis called out Fez Batista, but I do think Ben Williams, for me, is a great matchup for this card. In Ireland, in Dublin, it makes so much sense. Get Conor McGregor on his corner as well. I mean, mm. you imagine the scenes, that would be incredible. But another name I'm going to toss into that, Ben, is Deji. He He's gone down to 70 kilograms. He used to be nearly at 100 at times when he was out of camp. He's down to 70. It looks like he might be getting abs, according to King Kenny on the stream. 70 kg. Can I see? Can I get an early uh, sneak peek of what you're looking like right now? I don't know. I mean, it sounds like he's taking it seriously uh, from what King Kenny was saying. He's got it done. Like, I think he's got the abs right now, if what we're hearing is true. So props to Deji for slimming down and, and getting that definition. And uh, hey, if I if I got a million pounds for just getting in shape, <laughs> you know, I, I would do that too. Well, I wouldn't mind seeing Deji in a mankini if he does lose the bet. So uh, I think it's a win-win at the end of the day. Whoa, but... Hold on. What the fuck? <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we ask you for your questions that we can answer here on Misfits News, and we got some fantastic responses. Not going to be able to get to all of them today, but here are some randomized ones that we were able to collect. So, Biel, what questions does the Misfits News crew have to answer today? Let me hit you off with the first one by Fred Baker 4 He asks, why do so many cards end up being scrapped? For example, the 6th of July card that was meant to happen. It's a good question. You know, I don't have a complete answer that can be applied to every single event that gets moved because they're all moved for a variety of different reasons. I would say the most common one is matchups falling apart. Like sometimes mm. you get a great event, you've got 
a nice six, seven fight card and you lose half of them because of injuries or a variety of different reasons with the fighters themselves. And that just causes the whole event to be canceled, pushed, suspended. So I'd say like that's the most common one. BL from what I've heard, but maybe you've got a different answer on that. I was going to say, Mams a lot of times talks to us a lot about the events that were meant to happen. We know there was meant to be an event in July. We know some of the concepts mm -hmm. that were meant to happen. And sometimes it falls through because fighters can't make it. There's injuries. There's no not the right agreement with the place they're trying to make it happen. There's so many factors. That's the thing. There's so many factors that people can't consider. Mm -hmm. We can't just go, well, we're fighting next week in, I don't know, Brazil. It's not like that. There's a yeah. lot of back and forth that goes into it. It needs to make financially make sense. Does only need to agree. Wassermans need to agree. Misfits need to agree. There's so many parties and the fighters need to agree that it's not as easy as let's just make it happen. Right, right. In an ideal world, you could just snap your fingers and, you know, you'd have a, an event and everything goes smoothly. But unfortunately, we're not in an ideal world. I mean, yeah. in an ideal and world, we would have Nareej Goyat headlining every event. But unfortunately, guys, <laughs> that's not going to happen yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> let's move on to the next question by EDE Trailers. Sorry if I butch up the names. What's a dream tag team boxing match for the Misfits News duo? So you and I have been very vocal about B. Dave and Luis Pineda. And I mm. think that that still reigns supreme as like the top matchup that makes the most sense that I think we'd have the most fun in and we'd absolutely win in. A couple other like random tag team matchups that I think would be fun. I like the Ice Poseidon one because that's who... The Ice Poseidon and Vargas? Yeah, that's who Pineda and B-Day started off with. They won that one. So yeah. let, let us show the world. We can do it as well, but we're going to do it better a faction. I think an interesting one would be get Most Wanted and Evil Hero back together and see if, <laughs> you know, the, the second iteration of that tag team could work. <laughs> Especially after I destroy him this Friday, then, you know, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll see if we can run it back again on Misfits. Let's just hope he makes a walk on that one. So the next question that we go on to is by Ben Sheldrake 2. And it says, how is the KSI main event going to work? Well, Ben, we've gone through this a couple times now, but yeah. do you want to reiterate some of the points and summarize it for the people? So we're still waiting on the specific rounds and glove size, I believe. But the couple stipulations that I'm a big fan of, one, KSI can knock both of them out. Two, the tags are limited to three tags per round. And three, the jury, this new judging situation that Misfits is trying is going to be involved and they can use instant replay. They've got noise canceling headphones. So they're just completely dialed in on the action. And that should allow for a, a, if it goes to the scorecards, the best judging possible. So those are, I think, the three big stipulations to understand before we head into this August 31st fight week. Absolutely. I think that's all the points that we can cover as of right now. But obviously, when we get any updates, mm -hmm. when we get the latest, best believe you're going to see it on Mystic's News. So moving on to the next question by, I don't even know how to say this name. I'm going to call it Romeo underscore him. What interesting Twitter handle that is. And it goes, when is Deji returning to the ring? Well, I've got an answer for you there. I think it's pretty soon. Well, I'm hearing whispers. Yeah. I'm hearing little birdies here and there. I'm hearing little birdies. I think it's soon. He's lost the weight now. And I tell you, Ben, who else should he fight apart from the rematch with Alex Wasabi? I think that's the only I fight it. I want to see. I love it. I think it makes a ton of sense for me. And I asked, the, I asked you this question a couple months ago in this whole million pound getting abs challenge came about i was like if he's getting in shape why the fuck would he not want to come back and have another Sorry. fight you know he's he's basically doing all of the work necessary to get in shape for a fight camp why not have one honestly dude if they announced august 31st deji versus wasabi that would be a fantastic co-main event because we're still waiting on the card announcement we don't know what else is going on august 31st and specifically that co-main event so maybe it's deji's return as well well moving on to our next question by raheem c4 he asks what weight class is ksi fighting at in Dublin. Now, we do not have a direct response for this, but I do believe, am I wrong by saying, Ben, it was meant to be around 180 pounds? I like how you're putting this on my shoulders as if I know. I would say, yeah, 180 to maybe 185, I think would be the max. Because, you know, we got to remember, Slim and AT are, are going to be coming up a little bit. And so I don't think that they'd throw something crazy at them in terms of like the, the weight gain. But yeah, 180 sounds like a number that I've heard a couple times now. So on to our next question by Junior Afredo. 51. Will any artists or athletes be on the card in the future? Yes. The answer is absolutely yes. Now, Alfredo didn't ask for specifics we on not which get athletes or which artists. Because there are so some specifics that we've heard. There are definitely right, some specifics that right. we've heard. But he didn't ask for them. So all answer. we I have to do, it. we have to answer, yes, there will be. And that's all you get because you didn't be ask more for specific, specifics. Alfredo. Be more specific. <laughs> 
Our next question by Combat Takes YGM. Realistically, when can we get the winner of the tournament versus Dean the Great? That's a fantastic question. I love that question. Interim lightweight tournament. Semifinals and quarterfinals are still going on, I believe. We've got Walid Sharks and Ace Musa uh, that's going down, and, and that's a quarterfinal. Joey Knight is waiting for the winner. Yeti Gang and Argentinian King, that's a semifinal. So one of them is going to be in the finals, and they're fighting on August 10th. So I look at that and I go, okay, this lightweight tournament can probably wrap up by December. Like we can get the finals in December, which means that we'll get the winner versus Dean in hopefully March, you know, late February, maybe March. I think from what we're hearing is that they're going to get the finals by the end of this year, all the finals by the end of this year. This is a cruiserweight and the lightweight done then. And then hopefully by yep. early next year, we're going to see Dean face off with the winner of the tournament and the winner of both tournaments. Winner of He's both gonna tournaments. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and tax is going to go to 190. Yeah. Uh, I don't know when the cruiserweights are going to be done. That's a great, that's another good question that wasn't really asked, but like they're kind of starting slower with the cruiserweight tournament than they did with the lightweight tournament. So, like, I can see us finishing up the lightweight tourney first quarter of next year. I can see cruiserweights being done summer of next year. Now, our next question by Matthew111. He asks, is there any updates on the Misfits game? The short answer is... No, moving no, on. No, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I mean, to speculate a little bit, I don't think it's happening, at least in like a AAA title From release. Like, yeah, if you look at how difficult it was to make Undisputed, which is a, a great boxing game. Todd Grisham is deeply involved with it, but they've done a fantastic job. But like that process has taken a lot of years. And I just don't know if we really have the capital to do something like that. So I don't think the game's ever going to happen in my opinion. Maybe something for the future, maybe something for the fans to look forward to, but as of right now, as we say, we have no idea when it comes to that, and I doubt we're not hearing any whispers right now. We can't give yeah. you any any excitement, because right now we're not hearing anything. But for our next question by Mark Noble Roan, he asks, when will the pro tournament be? Now, I think that's a very good question, as we have just signed Amir Cashman Jr., and I think this is the steps, the baby steps, to start making those pro tournaments happen on Misfits. I think late next year would probably be a good timeline, I would say, for the pro tournament to begin. Because again, we have to collect a number of accomplished boxers and then organize a tournament, decide a specific weight class. Again, you know, we, we're just going off of some things we're hearing and it is on the table. It's still something that the organization's interested in, but I just don't see that focused effort at the moment. So that's why I feel like late next year, you know, we'll see it happen. Well, when we spoke to Mams, he seems excited about it. He seems passionate. And we know when Mams is excited mm -hmm. and passionate, he's going to put all his effort and all his chips into it and we can see right now the steps are being made for it to happen possibly as we say early late next year are we going to see it this year i'm not sure i'm not sure but i doubt no it. no they're not going to start a pro tournament this year because we've already got the cruiserweights we've already got the lightweight tournament we don't need three tournaments going on and especially a pro tournament with you know the influencer tournaments going on so our last question for the day thank you so much for submitting all your questions and we will keep chipping away through the pile and we'll <laughs> re-ask with that graphic um as the months go on just to collect a new bag of interesting thoughts from the community but we will keep chipping away at the ones from this uh as the weeks go on so our last question Benny E456. He asks, How excited are you guys with Misfits MMA? What are the most important factors for its success, in your opinions? What a great question. Now, that's something that I can feel coming this year, I would say. And the most important factors, in my mind, as someone who comes from the mixed martial arts world and has a heavy focus on that side of combat sports, you just got to get people that understand the different disciplines and are competent, adequate at them. You know, I've said this a couple of times, but like low level boxing, like we've had on Misfits, can still be entertaining and the presentation can still come out entertaining. Entertaining for, for everybody, but low level mixed martial arts, I just don't think anyone would really be happy with and they would all sit back and go, well, why the fuck did we waste so much time doing that? So I, I don't foresee many misfits boxers crossing over, maybe a select few that have experience, but I think we're gonna get a new crop of influencers. I think they're all gonna be pretty well versed. I would say a little sprinkle, get ready for something that's entirely different in terms of setting. You know, in combat sports, we've got the pit in karate combat, which again, I'll be fighting in Friday. You've got the UFC octagon. You've got rings, right? Like they used to do in pride strike force. This isn't any of them. It's different. 
which I'm, I'm very pumped about. I cannot wait. It's going to be exciting. A few names I'd love to see is JMX. He's obviously done a bit of MMA mm -hmm. background. Anthony Taylor, Logan Paul, and of course, Bruckner. Mike Perry. Bruckner as well. All great names. I think we've already got a great batch, but this is going to introduce a whole new plethora of names to Misfits Boxing. Yeah, and you know, I think that with the Misfits MMA, it's going to be a trickier formula to really figure out. And so those first couple of events, you know, we'll see how they go. I'm, I'm very optimistic because, you know, I trust Mams and DAZN and, and Misfits and Wasserman, and I know that they're going to stick the landing, but, um, you know, we'll see. I'm very excited. Well, make sure you keep getting those questions in for the Misfits community questions that you can find on the Misfits Fitz Boxing official Twitter and we're going to keep chipping through. We're going to keep reposting it. So make sure you're getting on there and you may feature on the official Misfits Boxing channel. Now, last thing that we have today, BL, is of course the face-to-face -face interview with the least talented combat sports athlete of all time, potentially. It is my opponent, Most Wanted. We got to hear from him. BL, you did a great job interviewing. Take it away. Well, today in the Misfits News booth, we have something different. A sort of interview with a man that you're going to be fighting, Ben. So please welcome in the notorious Most Wanted. How are we both doing today? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Hopefully you are too. I'm doing very well. Ben, how are we doing on the other side this time? Usually you're co-presenting this with me. This time I'm interviewing you. I know. Roles have been flipped, uh, but I'm feeling fantastic. Never better is how I put it. You're looking sharp. You look like you lost a lot of weight. Most Wanted, I must say, you're looking sharp as well. Love Lovely haircut. I can tell you've had it freshly done. But I think there's a key date we need to talk about. Something we need to address at the very start of this video. We haven't seen you since Misfits 13. So can you give me your reflection upon what happened and what really went on on that date? I mean, it's simple. I mean, everyone pretty much knows the story. I, I froze up and I had a panic attack. I didn't really deal with the situation that was happening that day at the, that, the way I should have. It's something I'm going to have to regret for the rest of my life and I will never be able to change it. But as long as I'm making the right steps moving forward and trying to redeem myself, not for everyone, but just myself as well, then hopefully people and like the people watching at home should be able to see what I'm trying to do the right things now. A lot of people were speculating whether you took a bribe. As you said, you panicked. Is there any truth behind a lot of the speculations? I know that sounds crazy for me to ask, but I think it's something we need to address. Not for sure. I think it's very important to address things like that because, you know, when you have uh, slimy pricks like Keemstar running around, open his rat mouth all the time, you know what I'm saying? Like Ben's dad is. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It, it's really important when you need to address them things because it's not true because I don't have a kick deal. I'm also poor. Ask Ben. I'm so poor. Yeah. I didn't get my, couldn't get a fucking like food, even the Uber from from the flipping the airport to the to the to the hotel. It's all mad. People are telling me I I got I got bribed. Like I, I don't do I look rich? Do I sound rich? Like come on, man. Silly. It's it's, I, it's bullshit, bro. Ask ask go ask Aiden Ross. Go ask Aiden Ross. If most wanted was bribed, he would definitely smell better. You'd be able to afford <laughs> some deodorant, maybe like a cheap cologne. You don't need anything crazy. Just a little spritz upstairs, buddy. You know. Ben, I want to sort of talk to you about that as well. Someone not making their ring war. I mean, a lot of people had a lot to say, and I remember you actually tweeted out about it and your thoughts about it. What's your thoughts about it now? The fact that most wanted didn't make that walk. Yeah, it's disappointing for a variety of different reasons. And like most said, you know, we've talked about this extensively, so it doesn't need to be hammered to death, but uh, these events, Misfits shows aren't cheap to put on. And to have the main event end in that fashion is just disastrous for all parties involved. Now, that being said, I think there is an element of understanding and empathy where if you're having a panic attack and you're going through some shit, it's not easy to make that walk. You know, it's hard enough if you're feeling normal and feeling good, right? It's even harder if you're experiencing some mental turbulence. So, um, you know, I think it's unacceptable and he's going to pay for it on Friday night, but I do have empathy for him. And um, I mean, I'm, I'm done shitting on him for that, you know, incident because it's it's all under the bridge at this point. I agree with everything Ben said. I think I think it's really important that it gets addressed. And I, and I think that it's really important that I got backlash for it as it was very much to serve. When it influenced the boxing community, people should be making fun of me. People should be having conversations about what's going on in the scene. So I'm, I'm never going to like, you know, look at people sideways for, for doing it. I will say, though, about, about me paying for it on Friday night. Listen, if Misfits wanted to send a fucking a Grim Reaper to kill me off once and for fucking all, it wouldn't be you, Ben. So just shut the fuck up and sit there and look, look fucking ugly as you do. <laughs> hey, listen, Misfits didn't send me. This is on my own accord. Your a fucking existence on this card is my doing. Don't get it twisted. This is not from any upper organization. Now, they're going to be happy to see it occur, but you were brought here by me to be slaughtered by me. Don't get it twisted. That's a delusional thing. And I think that I, I'm just going to... Delusional. You know I, think, I think it's very delusional. I think it's the most delusional thing you could have said.
and just given the fact that you know what's going to happen on Friday night. I am going to hit 155 with zero problems. And again, I'd like to remind everybody, I'm coming down, you're coming up. This on paper is not good for you. You know, I was the nail and Gabe Silva was the hammer last time out. You have to be the nail now get twice. You know, you never get to be the hammer, which has got to be a bummer. That's got to suck to just be yeah, blown let's, let's apart. Yeah, let's keep talking about it though. But just as far as what you're saying, you have the experience on me. You've been doing kickboxing and multiple like MMA kind of striking things for longer than me. You you have the weight on me, the height on me, the reach mm -hmm. on me. You have everything on me, right? So like, this is going to make me look real bad when I win, right? Or real good when I win, right? If you somehow beat me, I genuinely might have to go drown myself. Like that would be it for me because I just can't imagine a world in which you'd get your hand raised against me. <laughs> well, I don't want you to drown yourself, bro. But like, you know, you might have to go to the bar and drown your sorrows in some some alcohol or yeah. something. But I don't know about, about you getting your hand raised. Uh, the only time you'll raise your hand is to speak in one of my Twitter spaces or something. Or to commentate the fight where he got knocked the fuck out. You remember that? I was on the broadcast team for that, and I looked like I was that raising was Gary my hand that, that was Gary Oliff. That was Gary Oliff throwing the towel in, mate. He doesn't know me. It was a bit premature, okay? It was a bit premature. Fuck you that are kidding. Is. That was premature? You yeah, after even Mam said, on the, Mam, Mam said on the broadcast it was, it was premature. Mam said, All I you think did. if he didn't have the towel ready, it was a bit premature. He said that himself. Yeah. Listen, I love Mams. He was wrong there. You were done. Rounds two and three, all you were trying to do was clinch. You were gassed. You were out of your depth. I'm not coming down on you because I, I I can relate. You know what I mean? I have a lot of understanding of the position you were in. But don't get it twisted. Don't say, oh, it was premature. You were done. And that's fine. And it's going to happen again on Friday night. Let's it's say, actually going to be worse better, on Friday night. Let's say the better, man. I, I'll just I'll just make it clear now. Like, There's a reason I'm sitting here so comfortable and calm. As as far as the result of, of Friday, <laughs> it's going to be pretty black and white. Yeah. Yeah. Shooting fish in a barrel. Shooting fish in a barrel. I mean, this is going to be one of the best nights of my life, I think, on Friday. I'm very excited for it. I appreciate yeah, you stepping in. Like the second, I mean, to be fair, it, it, the best fight of your life, bro. The only fight you've had, you got knocked out in the first round. You can make fun of me for third round finishes and stuff. I said best night. Best night. N-I-G-H-T. Not fight. Whoa, 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 whoa. Spell that again? N-I-G-H-T. Night. <laughs> oh, right, right. I was just making sure. I was hey, just... stop it. So I see what you're doing. Stop yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> that's going to stop right there. I've got a pause. I'm thinking I'm going to put it on pause. A lot of people are saying you don't deserve to fight on Misfits ever again. What is your response to that? Do you think you deserve to be back on Misfits Boxing? Not right now, no. I agree with everyone. Obviously, like I had a, I was on the platform. I would be delusional to not act like I was supposed to be there, and I worked my life to get to that position, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. No, I got lucky. I, you know, I was three people turned down that Joey fight. I took it. I went in and there. I did all right, and my promo was decent as well. And then they put me in the next fight against Fox in the main event, and it was a real big opportunity again, another opportunity of a lifetime. And you know what happened happened, and I'm not hiding from it. But I think I think it's it's more than fair that I I wasn't invited back to the platform. Of course, I made a huge mistake, and I and I let a lot of people down and left people disappointed. But as far as me me coming back, I would need to to have a crazy renaissance for me to come back. And I think this is a step in that direction, me me fighting Ben and, and especially when I knock him out emphatically and it goes viral mm -hmm. and his his parents watch it and it's like, oh no, oh, our son, our son, like again, like for the second time. So it's like, you know, I think these these are the steps in the right direction for me. What do you make of that, Ben, when he says that? It's just complete delusion. He's getting stopped by 135ers. What the fuck do you think is going to happen when I hit you in four ounce gloves? There's absolutely nothing you can do to damage me. It, like I said, it's fish in a barrel. I I agree with what he's saying in uh you know so our redemption arc and i think that there is a world where most wanted could be back on misfits and i'd love to see it unfortunately he's gonna have to dig himself further out of this hole when i when i tko him you know i mean it's gonna be a bit hard to go oh and two right in, in these large public events but uh hey after i finish you i'll do what i can to get you back on i suppose i don't know man you know what i was just thinking you know because you was just waffling i wasn't really listening but you know what? This is kind of similar to um Deji and Fusi. If you remember, they're both on losing streaks. They both lost their last fights pretty badly. And, you know, someone's O has to go, but it's in the wrong column. Like, you know, it's kind of similar. Yeah. Most wanted them, Ben. Deji and Fusi reincarnated, some may say. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that most Juan and I were absolutely kind of thrown to the flames a little bit <laughs> with our opponents. Like, Joey Knight and Gabe Silva are not easy people to compete against. And I'm not sure what your, your experience boxing-wise was like before that fight. I really didn't have much. We didn't have the best Misfits debuts. Um... <laughs> Talking about Misfits debuts, I don't, I, I've been drilling at most wanted. Now it's my time to drill to you, my co-host. Let's yep. talk about that last fight, Gabe Silva. Things didn't really go your way. So why return back to combat sports? 
what's the reasoning for this? Well, there's a lot of different reasons. You know, this is a great content opportunity. I think first and foremost, it's unique. There's not many people, I would say. In fact, nobody that's done Misfits and now Karate Combat as well. So making history is something I'm deeply interested in. And I'm glad that most and I can do it together. Gabe was a, a very challenging opponent. I mean, it's Anderson Silva's son. It was what I expected it to be. Uh, it was a very fun fight week. I mean, I kind of figured that the result was going to be the result. And so made peace with that and just was... Uh, uh, was having a good time. Had a couple okay shots. Not the performance that some people said it was. I had a couple okay moments. But yeah, you know, that happened. And that was seven months ago. Now I'm focused on this fight on Friday. Most, what did you make of his performance? What did you analyze off of it? I mean, not much. Like, as far as I'm aware, like, experience gap was crazy. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it was like a late notice thing as well. He flew over here. He lost his luggage. He didn't have his own clothes. The whole thing was mad. It was very haphazard. To no one's fault necessarily. It was just the nature of the situation. To be honest with you, it, it was quite inspiring. I, I mean, today I was going back and, and looking at um the online face, the digital face to face that he did with Gabe. And, and I remember him talking about this same yes mentality and that's how we got so far in even just um calling sports like commentating and stuff and i think that's that's really really important for people like me and ben and anyone that's like um not got millions and millions of followers to have if you want to be involved in this space so to be honest it was kind of just a testament of what you can get if you're just the easiest person to work with i mean ask ben when we was talking about negotiating this fight when it came to purse yeah. weight rounds everything the guy like bro <laughs> the text was crazy man said the weight class yes <laughs> this yes sure yes <laughs> the same thing man yeah. to everyone and i think all of us three in, in the call can say that people at home need to have that say yes mentality when you get given opportunity you need to jump at it and grab it and, and rinse it for all it has now ben another question i have for you because a lot of people are saying that you're platforming someone that doesn't deserve to be platformed especially after everything that's happened what's your response to that well as i said before i think that there's a world where most want wanted to get a very nice redemption arc and the story that he's trying to write could be a, a, a very fun one. I, and I like him. I mean, again, I don't really have anything extremely negative about him personally. You know what I mean? Um, I think we've, we've had one fight week where we hung out. Very fun time, you know? So as someone who knows him a little bit more than maybe the people online, I would say that I hope that we're in a world where there's a redemption arc here. And if you're mad at me about platforming somebody that's an easy fight for me then you know <laughs> that's on you i needed a win and thankfully most wanted stepped up and is willing to play that role he calls you an easy fight what's your response to that i mean it's, it's, it's a fight where he's, he's gonna talk shit i think he's an easy fight too i think most people before nashville i've had this conversation with so many people right <laughs> so many people said why don't you fight ben ben called me out on ashley rackson's youtube channel do you know how many people told me yo maybe you should fight ben bro that's an easy fight he doesn't take this shit seriously at all. You should fight him. He's an easy fight, easy fight, easy fight. And I was like, eh, he's a cool guy. I don't think it's really that interesting to me. And I kind of really liked that tournament. I really wanted to get into the tournament. So it, it, is, it is where it is. I kind of agree with him. I don't have any disrespect or hate towards him. I just hate his, you know, his far Bobby and Keemstar, the fat board crap that he is. No, but as far as as far as what you were saying beforehand about people not wanting me to be platformed and thinking that I'm this terrible, terrible person. I made a big mistake, but let's not act like half these people that are being platformed haven't done way worse things than me. Way worse things than me. I'm sure the people at home can put the, put the puzzle pieces together as well. Let's not be ridiculous here. I want to up the pressure a little bit. I want to turn on the oven now. All the pressure is on your shoulders, Ben. Yeah. If you lose this fight, everyone's going to be putting it on repeat. You know it's on Twitter. You know it's going to be, again, haunting you as that last fight has. Potentially even worse this time. Are you ready for that? Yeah, I mean, if I lose this fight, then the fallout from the Gabe Silva TKO loss, it's going to pale in comparison. I will be made fun of every single day, every fucking Misfits event. I'll never escape it. So that's added motivation. You know, I, I have been made fun of quite a lot for the Gabe Silva loss. <laughs> and even still, man, people on Twitter will be like, is this you? And like, that was to, <laughs> that was to Anderson Silva's son. Imagine what's going to happen if I lose to fucking Most Wanted, dude. <laughs> um, so <laughs> yeah, there's definitely an element where I'm feeling the pressure and the weight a little bit more than last time, but I'm just a lot more confident as well. Like, like any added anxiety from, from taking on Most Wanted, it's outmatched by the level of confidence I have in my abilities and the fact that I now get to do a lot more than just throw my hands. Yeah, so I, I sure, there's pressure, but it doesn't matter.
it's not going to change the result. Most the same things applies for you as well. To be honest, whoever loses this fight is going to go through it. We know this, especially on that Twitter community. Both of you have such a toxic fan base. It's actually beyond me. Whoa, 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 whoa. I see. Honestly, no. You have to say it's toxic. On every tweet, yeah, you're gonna get I another see hate. You're going to get another 2v1 hate. situation here. Relax yourself, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Don't take both of you on the same night. Don't you dare disrespect <laughs> the PL. <laughs> <laughs> don't you dare don't you dare no but to be fair like when you look at your twitter i feel bad for you guys sometimes because it is harsh like some of the things you both get is harsh so that's what i'm telling you is if you lose this fight most you know it's going to be pain you get a lot of backlash all the time when you go on twitter i mean right now all eyes are on you most wanted if you lose this fight the pressure is going to be insane and the road back to misfits is going to be even larger so are you ready for that i mean at the, at the, i don't really care man it's, it's people talking online it's always going to happen i mean when other people are going through their things i'm the one talking so it's just you know swings and roundabouts really swings and roundabouts i don't think that this makes his path to misfits longer with the loss here on friday in fact i think it makes it shorter because the way that i looked at it was okay what does most wanted have to prove to any executives at the zone or misfits or whoever he needs to prove that he can make the walk taking on myself who again like we mentioned earlier on paper i have a lot of advantages here in this one making that walk for me i think proves anything he needs to so i think this makes the the return to misfits a lot shorter than it could have been i respect that i respect that ben you've been posting a lot about this fight all over twitter you've been saying it's not going to reach the final bell so how do you yeah. see this fight playing out what punch is going to end the fight what kick what's going to end it gotta watch karate combat 47 on friday to figure it out but i i just feel that like defensively he has very bad habits and i just don't think that those have been changed at all it's hard for me to believe that since your fight with joey knight and since that boxing match on june 1st you're an entirely different fighter that's impossible right so i think that i'm just going to exploit what's right in front of me and what me and the team have seen and what we've practiced the last couple weeks so there's a variety of strikes that i promise are going to get through and that will absolutely hurt you and yeah judges take this one off most what's your prediction you're only a few days out now how do you see this fight going i'm gonna shock the world you're gonna shock the world <laughs> how bad you do <laughs> Most, a lot of people are going to be saying that whether you're going to be making that walk this time, everyone's going to be anticipating, watching to the final moment till you make that walk. So most wanted, can we expect you to make the walk this Friday night? Yeah. Simple words, simple words. I, I mean, I don't, I mean, like, well, that's the fucking, bro, that's a fucking dumb question. Yeah, yeah. I, I, oh, yeah. Are you going to walk out in the fight? You sign a contract to walk out and fight. Yeah. Well, maybe yes, you yes, take yes, another yes. bribe. I don't know. <laughs> Is that what we're doing? 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 You want me to expose you? You want me to expose you, Beyond? You want me to expose, expose me? Expose me. Do it. Release it to the fans. It'd be funny if you answer it. that question. You're just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Walk out? I don't think so. <laughs> this is technically taking a bribe. You guys are convinced to mean to say no to walking out like i'm just saying ben's yeah. just sweating now his hands are sweat fuck if he doesn't walk out <laughs> he'll come and find <laughs> you if he doesn't him. if most wanted doesn't walk out against me it doesn't change much i mean it'd be a bummer to not display what i've worked on the last couple weeks but i mean i'll still get paid for showing up and i'm a lot fitter than I was for the Gabe fight now. So, you know, got me in shape a little bit. That's nice motivation. But th what's funny is like, because he's the blue corner, so he'll be walking first. So if he doesn't walk, then I, I won't no walk. No one's walking. <laughs> so, so you better walk or else they probably won't let me go out there. <laughs> no, man, Dory, I've got my victory speech planned and everything. So I'm for sure making a walk this time. What's your big speech? Why would I spoil my victory speech, bro? Oh, your What's victory my... speech. Well, I mean, you victory might as well speech. use it now because yeah. you're not going to use it on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, <laughs> what I want to do with both of you, Ben, I want you to give your final words to Most Wanted. Obviously, we're only days out from your fight now. Final words yep. before you meet him in the center of that ring. Thank you for accepting this opportunity. You know, you did come in and kind of save the day a little bit. So a lot of respect and I appreciate it a ton. This was a bad idea, though. And I think that you're greatly out of your depth once again. And I'm just looking forward to getting that win. First time getting the hand raised, it's going to feel great. Most Wanted, what's your final words for the man, Ben Davis, before you meet him in that ring Friday night. I think Ben's making a big mistake here. I think he's stepping into the unknown against me. Big respect for stepping in here, though. But yeah, I'm, I'm just excited. You know, first time getting my hand raised is going to feel great. Well, of course, we're on the Misfits Boxing channel. However, make sure to tune in, watch my friend and the host, Ben Davis, take on Most Wanted on the free Karate Combat channel.
live on Twitter, YouTube. Where else, Ben? Am I missing anything else? That's the two ones for our fight. Main cards on UFC Fight Pass, but we are the featured prelims, so that'll be available for free on YouTube and, like you mentioned, the Twitter stream. Well, it's an absolute pleasure, both of you. I look forward to watching your fight with my cookies and milk on Friday night. Well, Ben, we switched the tables. You're on the other side this time. I was interviewing you. How did you see that face off? Are you excited for Friday night? I'm so excited. There's so many people in this community that have it out for Most Wanted because of what he did in Nashville, rightfully so. And the fact that I get to be the judge, jury, executioner on Friday night, I'm just stoked. And I think he's delusional. I think everything that he was saying in that face-to-face, the confidence that he's trying to build in himself is a complete lie. I think he's very scared. And this is going to be a very quick fight. And one last time for the people, Ben, where can they tune in to see Ben Davis return? Oh, you got to tune in to Karate Combat. It's live and free on YouTube, June 28th. That's tomorrow, I suppose, when this video comes out. So get your popcorn. I believe 6 p.m. Eastern time is when it starts. And uh, yeah, Most Wanted's last day on Earth, you know, Friday, June 28th. Thanks as always for tuning in, guys. I've been your host, Ben the Bane Davis. Make sure you like, subscribe every Tuesday, Thursday. Misfits News coming at you with the best updates in crossover combat sports. BL, thank you so much. And until next time. Take care.